Out of all the games that have come out this year, this has to be by far the best menu screen simulator. All jokes aside, we're here to answer two questions today. First of all, why is Helldivers 2 generating so much hype? And then is it here to stay? In order to answer these questions, I'm going to take a deep dive into several categories. The first of which is looking at the reviews and seeing the general consensus of the game. Next, we'll take a look at the game as it is now, what's in the game and the content that we can explore today. Looking at a quick overview of both the lore and the gameplay. Then we'll go into the meat and potatoes of the video, which is the reasons for the hype behind this game. And and lastly, we'll look at promised content, basically content that has been confirmed is coming from the devs themselves. If you guys didn't already know, my name is Gookie. Welcome to the video. I'm excited to dive into hell with you guys for the next couple of minutes. Enjoy. Even though Helldivers 2 is Steam's top seller right now, it has mixed reviews instead of mostly positive or positive like most top sellers do. So we're not going to talk too much about that because 90% of the negative reviews are the ones that don't recommend the game or because of the server capacity. So I really want to take a look at the other big hitter as to why people are saying that they don't recommend this game. There are several reviews that talk about the anti-cheat software being too intrusive. This game uses nProtect Game Guard, which has client protection, hack detection, server authentication, and web security function setting according to its website. The main concern with a program like this is that it's essentially a root kit with kernel level access to your computer. In simpler terms, you're giving over god tier access to your computer through this program. I had a discussion about this with the boys, and of course by the boys I mean Copac and Senis, and we basically all came to the same conclusion. A responsibility like kernel level access is something that should be looked at as a danger, but also it should be looked at in a case by case basis. In this case, we have a game that's developed by a reputable company that's been around long enough to have a sequel to a successful game. On top of that, it was published by Sony, an even bigger staple company in the gaming industry. And companies like this aren't gonna just install shady anti-cheat software. They're not gonna make that part of their games. Aside from any legality issues that they may encounter, and of course that's another rabbit hole you can dive into, they have a reputation to maintain, which is something that's extremely valuable to companies like Sony who live in a competitive market like the gaming industry. People that have issues with this anti-cheat software in this particular case have either A, been burned by something like this in the past, or B, are mad that they can't use their fucking cheats. Mind you, we came to this conclusion based off of our own opinion and experiences with online gaming. But of course, I would love to hear what you guys think about these issues down in the comments below. One thing I do agree on is that we are in a shitty situation because these development companies are pretty much being forced into using these more intrusive anti-cheat softwares because cheats are getting to the point where they're so advanced, they're harder and harder to detect without doing this. We wish there was a way for, you know, us to get our cake and eat it to not have an anti-cheat system that is so intrusive but also have one that's good enough to detect the cheats that these scumbags are developing and getting away with by finding loopholes and legal systems and then putting them out. I don't even want to get into that either because that's an entirely different video that we'll be making in the future so be on the lookout for that. By the way I learned this recently too the reason the devs are putting such an intense anti-cheat system in a PvE game is because there is a lot of exploit in the previous type about the progression system, the items that you can get while you're, you know, having to scavenge around the game. And because people were spawning in so many items and doing things that the game just wasn't meant to experience as a whole, it just completely messed up the progression economy within the game. And that's something that's very precious to them, valuable to them as far as like the entire package. So they didn't want it to happen again. So it's commendable that they're actually putting, you know, an effort into trying to tackle the cheating systems. It's just, it's sad that they have to do it in a way where people feel uncomfortable downloading their game because they don't want people to be able to access their data. Now that we got the negatives out of the way though, even though it's being review bombed on Steam, a lot of people that are saying they don't recommend the game are saying that they still love it. They, they're just putting not recommend because of the server capacity issue. And of course, everybody that does recommend the game that is putting a thumbs up on Steam is saying shit like for democracy or just some funny satire thing that goes with the theme of the game, which is really cool to see because it really has cultivated a community 
community of people that can all be in on the same jokes. We'll talk about that more in a little bit here since we're going to be going into the game as it is right now. First though, let's get a description of the game or an overview of the game and the gameplay. It is mission to mission gameplay. You choose a mission at your ship or your hub. You dive into a generated planet that varies in sizes. You'll have main objectives to complete as well as optional side objectives. And once you have completed the main objectives or completed the mission, you have the ability to extract. All of this of course is happening while you're fighting hordes and swarms of either bugs or robots of all sizes from the smallest of bitches to the biggest of bosses. If you didn't already know, there is progression in the game. You have just under 50 stratagems to unlock. Stratagems are just things that you can call from your ship to help you in battle, whether it's a sentry gun or a freaking nuke and everything in between. And then there are around 10 pages within the battle pass at the moment to unlock and that battle pass will be available forever. So it's a little bit different from the traditional seasons we've seen in live service games in the past. In order to unlock things in the battle pass, you have to get the currency, which is the medals, which you get from playing the game, obviously. And you can unlock different armors and weapons and cosmetics and stuff like that. Somebody on Reddit actually calculated that there you need 3,648 medals in order to unlock everything on the battle pass, all the 10 pages, which is absolutely insane. It's absolutely nuts. It kind of puts into perspective how grindy this game could be, but you don't really notice it because you're just having fun while you're playing. And of course, take that number 3,648 with a grain of salt because it's a Reddit user that calculated this and not a game dev. So their math could be bad. I don't know. <laughs> and lastly, for progression, you have the objective to unlock higher difficulties as you play. In order to do that, you have to do submissions within the main mission within an area. You have to play at the highest difficulty available to you and you have to complete all the missions. And once you do that, you get another difficulty unlock. The difficulties go from trivial, easy, medium, challenging, hard, extreme, suicide mission, impossible, and hell dive. Hell dive is hell. <laughs> of course, I glossed over some things, but that's the gist of the gameplay. There are more juicy and spicy details that I'm going to be covering, but that's I'm saving that for later in the video, so stay tuned. And before moving on to the next category, I want to cover the lore behind the game. I didn't play the first Helldivers, but from the research that I did, I got this. They are soldiers of freedom. Super Earth is their home. Democracy their creed. They are the Helldivers. Our story begins way back in 2015 with the release of Helldivers. It takes place in a dystopian future sci-fi and pop culture inspired world. And it sets the scene with Super Earth. It's got this managed democracy, which gives the illusion of choice to its citizens, but really it's just a totalitarian government. The government basically brainwashed their citizens using the threat of like alien invasion and the destruction of humankind to engrave the protection of democracy and create create this army of soldiers that protect the outskirts and the borders of the galaxy of the super earth. So if you've been wondering why a bunch of gamer nerds have been yelling democracy and liberty, it's because of the satire of the game. This isn't a serious take on political commentary, by the way. This is heavy, heavy satire. At the end of the first game, somehow they were using the bugs that they were killing as a resource. So they were capturing and harvesting them. Fast forward a hundred years in the future within the Helldivers universe. Super earth is in danger. Bugs and robot hordes are coming to kill us all. They're invading and it's up to the Helldivers to protect democracy. This game is nothing short of brilliant with its humor and satire. I'll talk about some examples for that throughout the video as we go into reasons behind the hype. But before that, I highly recommend if you haven't already seen the introduction video to Helldivers 2. Even if you don't plan on playing it, it pretty much sums up the satire and the comedy and the humor behind the game. So highly recommend checking that out. All right, we finally reached the meat and potatoes. We're gonna talk about the reasons behind the hype. Reason number one is the evident passion that the developers have poured into this game. I'm talking specifically about systems that people probably don't even realize are there. One of which is the game master system. It's basically a human dungeon master that can control things that happen throughout the game as you're playing it in real time. They have the ability to tweak things as you're playing. For example, the deputy game director, Sagar Baroshi, said, we have this game master functionality where we can drop in more or less things like buffs, but sometimes debuffs will happen too. A good challenge sometimes can be really valuable. We really want to model a different type of live service experience here. In this instance, he was talking specifically about an influence on an individual game where they were able to see a player struggling against a specific enemy 
type and they gave that player a stratagem that they didn't have access to before just because they wanted to give him a hand or a buff as he called it for that specific instance. Just like they have the ability to help you in the game, they also have the ability to take if away. <laughs> Although this is really, really cool, I don't think it's happening at least right now. Of course, this is speculation, but with the release of the game and having the server issues, which I'm assuming they're putting all of their manpower onto as well as giving bug fixes and quick fixes. Why can't I use my stratagems? It's glitched for me. I can't pull up my stratagems. I don't have stratagems, I guess. What is wrong with this game right now? My sprint is not working. Help me! My sprint's not working! None of my buttons are working and I'm fighting a charger. Please. I beg you have some mercy. Regular speed running away from <laughs> I am. They probably don't have somebody just lying around messing with people's games. This game exceeded their expectations as far as sales and player count, so they don't have the manpower right now to be able to do what they probably wanted to do from the beginning of the game. I'm not saying it's never gonna happen. It's cool that they have this functionality within the game already and they're able to take it over when they have the manpower to do so. But I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon and I don't think it's happening now at all. There is, however, a game master functionality for community progression as well, which I'm assuming is happening in real time, at least with the tools that they have in place. Let me explain a little bit here. The AI enemy factions will react to what the community is doing and the actions that they are taking. In a strategic way. The AI is guided by both the devs and tools integrated within the game systems. For example, if the community is attacking heavily within a specific sector of the star system, the enemy might take a strategic route in surrounding us or going around or going directly through us. It, it depends on what the developers want the enemy factions to do. So it's really cool because as a community, we're influencing enemy actions and they're reacting in a way that's strategic. The devs said there's a meta narrative going on that's playing out at the galactic level. So that's super exciting for the future of the game as well. The next reason behind the hype is the headline, Helldivers 2 ends console wars. Unpopular opinion here, console wars are silly to begin with. I think it's silly to insult a person for choosing a, a product to buy and enjoy but that's neither here nor there right now because the headlines for this specific game have been highlighting the fact that ps5 players have demanded for this game to be cross-play and compatible with the xbox servers as well basically for this game to come out on xbox given the fact that when a game is really good and it's an exclusive one side usually just taunts the other <laughs> incessantly it's just it's really cool to see that it's bringing a community together rather than tearing it apart for democracy of course another reason for the hype is uh, this game is memeable it's a meme <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, what about the Welcome back, bitch. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> what the hell? Dave must have changed the ragdoll physics because I watched that little dude jump and like for whatever Jesus reason. Jesus Christ! Ah sorry, go ahead. For whatever reason, like gravity didn't oh, exist and it just went to space. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Ah! Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I think this pretty much goes without saying that our generation has gone back to Ungabunga times and we communicate solely through images memes. Now instead of the pictures being on the walls, they're on our little magic boxes. This goes with the next reason that the satire and the humor within this game is done super well. I mentioned this before, but it, it gives people a running joke that they can all be a part of. It's, it's a sense of community and kind of like a cold following behind the game as well. Next, the game is simple and polished. The gameplay isn't super intricate and it's not hard to learn and the graphics are fantastic. The game is a graphical powerhouse with its weather effects, with its use of lighting within dark areas. The characters look really good. The voice acting is really good. And just overall, the production quality of this game is top tier, which leads us onto the next point, which is the fact that the gameplay is set up perfectly to create incredibly memorable moments of 
absolute chaos and goofiness and fun with its over the top cinematics embedded into the gameplay, making it super, super immersive and a unique experience with every drop. And the fact that it keeps your butt puckered no matter how good you are at video games. I mean, it's got massive explosions. It's got ragdoll physics. There's bits of bugs and body parts and robots flying around all the time. The game doesn't shy away from gore. And the cool part is that you get to see the damage that you are inflicting or is being inflicted on you in real time. So you can see chunks of bug flying off as you shoot that specific area of the enemy. The game avoids getting stale even though it has a repetitive nature to it because of the emphasis on squad work and the wide variety of stratagems. Every single time you play with a new person it's a different experience because they have a different gameplay style and you really do get to develop your own little strats within the game using the different stratagems that are available to you. So each time you drop in it makes for really unique situations all differing with different squads and moments of chaos. From the calm moments where it's like the calm before the storm to the crazy crazy chaos and the swarms of enemies that come at you. I think it was best described by Kopak when we were talking about this, he described it as an orchestrated chaos. As a little icing to the cake, the voice lines and the voice acting was, you know, done really well. The voice lines are not overbearing or annoying, like, oh, okay, I wish my character would shut up now. They're actually triggered by certain things, like if you kill a good amount of enemies, your character will start yelling something about freedom or liberty. And it's really immersive the way that they did it, because you could be yelling something like, get some, and if you get hit or you get killed or whatever, you get bumped and you start ragdolling, your character will actually be interrupted mid-voice line and be like, get some, oh! So that wraps up the reasons behind the hype this game is the sugar spice and everything nice that made the perfect orchestrated chaos of fun and destruction. And now we can move on to the promised content, what the devs have confirmed for the future of this game. The main reason I wanted to go over this is because it helps me answer the question, is it here to stay? Playing the game now and joining the battle means that you'll be able to influence the lore and the story that develops as the lifespan of this game continues. Like I mentioned before, Helldivers is going to be heavily influenced by the actions that the community takes. As we liberate certain battlefronts or areas within the galaxy, we'll push back the front of the enemies and new areas will Will become available new planets new biomes new enemy types and of course new unique missions within those areas this happens not only if we win the battle and push them back but if we lose the battle and they push us back and the best part about all of this is that all of this content with the biomes and the environments and unique missions it's all going to be free post-launch content let me take that back they haven't confirmed that it will be free forever it's not all going to be free but they have confirmed that there will be free post-launch content meaning i assume we'll be playing this for a long time before we have to open our wallets again to this game. All of these are general broad descriptions of the type of content we can expect in the future, but we don't have anything more specific that the devs have given us. For example, we don't have any sort of roadmap in the future. Even though we don't have too much information, they did mention, like I said before, that they're trying to create a new model within the live service games genre. So that's exciting. I'm excited to see what they mean by that and what they're going to do with the future content. I do believe it's going to be years worth of content that we get rather than just a couple of months. The main reason behind that is because the devs did mention that it's a galactic sized war, really emphasizing the fact that it's huge. They like to stay on theme when they talk about the game because they're trying to keep the meme culture alive. But that tells us in, in simple terms that yes, they do have a good chunk of planned content coming in the future. It's not going to end overnight. That wraps up pretty much everything I wanted to talk to you guys about today. As a little bit of a bonus discussion down in the comments, I want to pose the question for you guys. What features, whether it be gameplay or cosmetics, are you hoping that they add to the game? Personally, I really hope that they add vehicles, some sort of vehicles in the game. I know that that could possibly ruin the, you know, intended gameplay style of whatever strats you need to do or team communication because you can technically just jump into a car and run away from everything. But if they added a mechanic of like either giving the vehicles gas or a certain battery where you have to, you can't just use it willy nilly, you have to add a strat to be able to use the vehicles. That would be really cool and it could add a layer of fun to the game a layer of chaos that isn't there currently because sometimes it does feel like a little bit of a running simulator but other than that thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed subscribe if you want to see more videos like this we have a lot of video game related content for you guys available on the channel and if you can make a sacrifice to the algorithm gods leave a like if you like the video or if you didn't like it leave a dislike either way it helps us out a ton thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye